Welcome to a small PM Research model steam engine part 4. Working on the flywheel to shape the JB weld and commencing reassembly of the engine showing each step in detail. In this episode you will see me assembling the engine using the original slot headed bolts but I do intend to change these and I will feature the details about that in a future episode. Before starting the assembly I thought I would clean up the flywheel because I filled it with JB Weld and here it is. First of all I try a rotary grinder which is fairly successful at removing the JB Weld but once again I can't get into the corners so the best method I found apart from using various needle files is to use a piece of emery cloth torn into a strip and folded over. This method was by far the simplest. The two pack epoxy mix called JB Weld was very easy to remove and I could also continue shaping the edges of the spokes so they were rounded. I clamped the flywheel in my large bench vise and you can clearly see here that I'm using my brass covers for the jaws so I don't mark the flywheel. Surprisingly, cleaning up the flywheel took longer than I thought, but eventually, as you can see here in the clip, it's ready for painting. I'm going to paint it black to match the bed plate. Because this flywheel is a yellow colour, because it's non-ferrous metal, I'm going to paint the spokes black, because I like the combination of black and brass. Brass is fine until it tarnishes, but I suppose it's better than rust. This is the crank web mounted onto the crankshaft. And here's the crankshaft mounted in the chuck jaws of my small Myford lathe. I'm going to clean up the crank web in position like this. Health and safety warning, this is a very dangerous practice and it's not good to do it the way I'm doing it. Always support the sandpaper or any abrasive with a piece of wood. I'm doing it the wrong way for the purpose of the video. In past videos, I've shown quite a few instances of using pieces of wood attached to either emery cloth, wet to dry sandpaper or scotch bright. I'm using my Myford lathe for this because it's the smallest and least powerful lathe I have in the workshop, but nevertheless, if I get my hand caught in the chuck, it's going to do serious damage to me. It's a good idea to always have a great respect for machine tools, however small they may be. That's another job out of the way, the crank web is nice and shiny. Time to start the main assembly. Before that though, I'm applying some oil to the top of the main bearings. But as I do this, I notice that there's quite a lot of paint inside the hole of the main bearings. To remove this paint, it's a really simple job using a quarter of an inch diameter reamer to just run it through the bearings. It's not removing any metal, just the paint overspray. After cleaning away the paint particles, I re-oiled the bearings and now the crankshaft is in place. It's time to look at the rear cylinder cover. This has a gland nut that seems to stick out a long way, but that's not a bad thing because the gland nut will support the piston rod. Here I'm checking whether the gland is packed or not and it appears to be packed with some sort of a nylon or PTFE material. The running order of the assembly sequence is quite important. For instance, I've loosely placed the cylinder in position, followed by starting to bolt the cylinder to the main bed. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm temporarily using these slot-headed bolts. I'll make some hexagon bolts in another episode. Apart from the slot-headed bolt, there are two other things that are wrong in this image. The cylinder is fitted to the bed plate, but the crosshead isn't fitted to the piston rod and the paint overspray on the crosshead guides needs cleaning off. Because owing to the paint, the crosshead is a very tight fit in this position. It's a very simple job to remove the paint. I just used a needle file and cleaned off most of the paint and this will be fine. I didn't want to overdo it and start filing the crosshead guides. I tried the crosshead in position and everything was good. Here's the thread at the end of the piston rod. At this stage I'm not sure where this lock nut needs to be to allow the piston to travel along the cylinder without hitting the cylinder covers at each end. All I can do for starters is just screw the piston rod into the crosshead and I will adjust it later once the crankshaft's assembled. I'm going to fit the slot headed bolt underneath and I'm using a pair of surgical forceps to hold the bolt in the right position and then I use a long screwdriver to tighten the machine screw into the cylinder casting. The next job is to fix the eccentric rod to the piston valve. Nothing difficult there and here's the entire assembly in position. I may need to change the position of the piston valve 
once I set the valve timing, but that's not in this episode. The next part of the job is to fix the connecting rod to the crank web. And I must say that the method of fitting the connecting rod to the crank web is pretty good, with a separate part that can be replaced once it wears. And once again it's secured in place by yet another horrible slot-headed machine screw. This screw can be tight because it doesn't put any pressure whatsoever on the connecting rod. Here I'm fitting the top crosshead guides and I was contemplating drilling two holes in the centre of the crosshead guides to oil the crosshead, but it's much easier just to put some oil on top of the crosshead because the holes in these very small parts will be minute and it would look even worse if I fitted an oil cup. Here's the front cylinder cover which is also tarnished so it's over to the Myford lathe. I put it in the chuck holding it by the register and use some Scotch Brite to clean it up. I don't want to polish this part using my polishing spindle. I just want a nice machine finish on it. This video was filmed on Saturday the 4th of December quite early in the morning and at the moment it's very cold in here and the Myford lathe is running slowly. I thought I would have a quick look and find out what the problem is. The problem is definitely not the orange belt. It's the other one that goes from the motor to the counter shaft. I need to adjust the tension because it was okay when I first fitted it but now it appears slack. It's an easy fix, I just need to adjust the tension. That's it for this episode, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.